Okay, in this video, we're going to review what is meant by having a linearly independent set of vectors. And then we're going to solve this problem. And then we are going to do a couple example problems at the end um, where you can just kind of eyeball a set of vectors and determine if it's linearly independent or not. So really quick, if you have a set of linearly independent vectors, that means that no one vector in the set is redundant when you're defining the span. So for example, in this case, let's say V was linearly independent. That would mean that if you just look at the first vector, 8, negative 4, 1, the span of that vector is a line. And then when you add 3, negative 2, 5, the span of those two vectors would have to be a plane. And then when you add the third vector into consideration, the span of all three would have to be all of R3, right? Three-dimensional space. And so you can see every time you add a vector in a linearly independent set, the span uh, grows. It gets bigger, meaning no one vector is redundant when you're defining the span. Okay, but that's not how we're going to solve this problem. The way we're going to solve this problem is we're going to look and see if we can write what's called a linear dependence relation between these three vectors. Okay, what does that mean? It means that you can pick non-zero scalars C1 through C3 such that when you use them as weights in a linear combination of the three vectors in your set, you can write a linear combination um, that equals the zero vector. So something like this. If we write this linear combination set it equal to the zero vector, if we can find non-zero scalars C1 through C3 that satisfies this, then you can say the set is linearly dependent. And why is that? It's because um, the way that when I learned about linear dependence, the way I thought about it was if you, if you have a set of vectors, it's linearly dependent if you can pick at least one vector in the set and write it as a linear combination of the others. That's how I always thought about it. And so this makes sense to me because if you move, for example, this third, if you find non-zero C1 through C3, then you can just move this term over and divide by C3. And look, you've written this vector as a linear combination of these two. Um, okay, so if that doesn't make sense, it doesn't matter. The point is if you can write this linear dependence relation with non-zero C1 through C3, then the set of vectors is linearly dependent. Okay, so how are we gonna how are we gonna do that? Well, in order to find the solutions to this vector equation, C1 through C3, we, re we rewrite it as an augmented matrix. So we have this, this matrix, 8, negative 4, 1, 3, negative 2, 5, negative 13, 6, 3, and then the augmented column is all zeros. And we row reduce all the way down to reduce row echelon form, and we see if we have a free variable. So consider if we didn't have a free variable, we had a unique solution. That would mean the unique solution is C1 equals zero. Like if we had ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, it would mean we would have C1 equals zero, C2 equals zero, C3 equals zero. And that's not good, because that, that's like boring. That's called a trivial solution. We don't want a trivial solution where all the scalars are just equal to zero. We want non-zero scalars. And so that would mean that we can't just have a unique solution, we need to have a free variable, which would mean we need to have infinitely many solutions. So let's see what happens. So I'm just going to give you the reduced row echelon form of this matrix. It looks like this. 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And then through all your row operations, the augmented column never changed, right? And perfect, we identify our pivots. Here's a pivot, here's a pivot, and there's no pivot in the third row. So there's no pivot in this third column which means C3 is a free variable, which means we'll have what's called non-trivial solutions, which means a solution where C1, C2, or C3 equals something besides just zero. So we can find that solution. So, so really quick, already we know there's gonna be non-zero C1 through C3, so we can answer the question and say no, the, the set V is not linearly independent because we can, we'll be able to write this linear dependence relation. So let's actually do that. So from this row reduced matrix, we get C1 um, minus 2 C3 equals 0. I'm just going to move the minus 2 C3 to the other side. And get C1 equals 2 C3. C2 equals negative C3. That's from the second row. Hopefully you guys are pretty quick with this. By now we're just parameterizing our solution set by the free variable. Um, and so now we can pick anything for C3, our free variable. So let's just make it easy and pick 1. We don't want to pick 0, right? Because that would just give us c1 through c3 are all zero. So let's say c3 equals 1. So then that would mean c1 equals 2 times 1, which is 2. c2 equals negative 1. And then we picked c3 to be 1. So here, oops. Here are our scalars in the linear dependence relation. And we can check this, right? 
Um, we can check this. So C1 equals 2, C2 equals negative 1, and C3 equals 1. So 2 times 8 is 16. Um, 16 minus 3 is uh, 13. And then plus 1 times this last one, 13 minus 13 is 0. And you can check it on your own. It works for all three components. And so we've written a linear dependence relation. And so we say the set V is linearly dependent, not linearly independent. So the answer is no. It's not linearly independent. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And it's the same process. So if you had like a set of five vectors in R5, um, it looks really intimidating. Like how am I supposed to determine if they're linearly independent or not? But you just do this. You set, you write a general linear dependence relation. And then you, you, you re-represent that vector equation as an augmented matrix. You row reduce it and see if you have any free variables. If you have free variables, then you'll have non-zero set of scalars in the linear dependence relation, which means... Um, you could think of it as, which means you could write one vector as a linear combination of the others. Um, or you could just say, I've written a linear dependence relation, and so therefore the set is linearly dependent. Okay, so now, as promised, I want to go through two other examples where you can just eyeball the set. So one example is very, very easy. Let's say you have just two vectors in your set. How can you determine if just two vectors are linearly dependent or independent? So let's say I have this vector and this vector. Is this set linearly dependent or linearly independent? Well, if you just have two vectors, I like to think about it geometrically. You have this vector negative 2, 5, and you have negative 6, 15, way up here. Let's say this is not to scale, but you get the point. Let's say it's up here. Then here's one vector. Oh, this is tough. Here's one vector. And here's another. And uh, if they're scalar multiples of each other, that means they lie on the same line. And so the span of two of them is the same as the span of one of them. And so you can use that way of thinking where, well, one of them is redundant in defining the span of the set. So they're linearly dependent. But the point I'm trying to make, and you, you don't have to do this geometrically, you can just think about it. If, if you have only two vectors and one is a scalar multiple of the other, then they're linearly dependent. So how do you check that? Well, you do negative two times what gets you negative six? Well, that's three. So then that would mean if five times three is this entry, then this vector is just this vector scaled by three. And so you would say, yeah, then they're linearly dependent. And that's the case. So this vector times three is this vector. And so you say they're linearly dependent. So two vex are linearly dependent if they are scalar multiples of each other. Okay, pretty straightforward. So you can just kind of eyeball that. Another one I want to discuss is if you have a set of vectors like this. Let's say you have 1, 0, and 4, 5, and you have negative 2, 3. Okay, is this set of vectors linearly dependent or independent? Well, I can just look at this and say linearly dependent. And how am I able to eyeball that? Well, it's because you have more vectors than entries in each vector. You're like, okay, how does that mean anything? Well, that's the case. So I could write this out, but that would take a lot of time. You could just remember, if you have more vectors than entries in each vector, then it's guaranteed, that set of vectors is guaranteed to be linearly dependent. Um, the reason for this, if you tried to do your linear dependence relation, you'd have a scalar times this plus a scalar times this plus a scalar times this equals zero. You'd put that in an augmented matrix and you'd have one, zero, four, five, negative two, three, and then zero, zero. And remember, you, you want to have a free variable when you row reduce this so that you have non-zero C1, C2, C3. And you're guaranteed to have a free variable based on the dimension of this augmented matrix. Because here could be a pivot in reduced echelon form. Here could be a pivot. We could never have a pivot in this third unknowns column. And so because you have more vectors than entries in each vector, then you're guaranteed to have this set be linearly dependent. Okay? Hopefully that helps.